Hare Krishna, dear devotees. So welcome all. So Hare Krishna. So we have completed nine successfully chapters. Thank you very much, Prabhuji, for uh, uh, wonderful Kirtan. And Prafulla Prabhu for wonderful Rodanga. <laughs> so he started learning after after I start, but I still could not play for Hare Krishna Kirtan. So Prafulla Prabhu has played for uh, Jai Radha Mara. <laughs> Great. Okay. So before we start our session, so let's take darshan of Iskan Seshadripuram deities. So Jai Jagannath, Jai Baladev, Jai Shubhadhamayaki, Shudrashan Bhagavan ki Jai, Panchatatva ki Jai. Gaur Nitai ki jai, Radha Madhav ki jai, Nasimha Bhagavan ki jai, Girgo Vardhan ki jai. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya, Jnana Anjana Chalakaya, Chakshurut Militam Yena, Tasmai Shri Te Namaha, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Preshtaya Bhutale, Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta, Swamin Itinamine, Namaste Saraswate Deve, Gauravani Pracharine, Nirvisesha Shunyavadi, Paschatya Deshatarine, Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadara, Sri Vasadi Gauravakta Brunda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Shila Prabhupada ki jai. So we will dedicate this session to Shila Prabhupada. So before we start our session, one uh, uh, memorable instance about uh, Shila Prabhupada we will discuss. Uh, Shila Prabhupada was in uh, Mumbai uh, when he was about to leave his body. Before just almost in the last stage of Shila Prabhupada, he was in Mumbai. So at that time, the Juhu temple was not yet constructed. So Prabhupada's dream was to construct the Juhu temple before he leave his body. So while the construction was going on, Prabhupada was there in the temple and he was given some room and where he was uh, staying. And he almost uh, was not eating food, solid food for almost one month or more than a month. Okay, So he was only living on liquid foods. So at that time, while Juhu temple was under construction, there were a lot of sounds coming. Okay, so a lot of you know bricks sounds, even the iron bending. So a lot of uh, uh, hammering sounds. All these things are coming. So Prabhupada disciples thought that you know it is better we move Prabhupada from Mumbai to Vrindavan so that he will peacefully be staying there. Already he is not feeling well, and moreover these disturbances might. Uh, cause his health to deteriorate further. So then Prabhupada, the almost disciples uh, have decided to take him to Vrindavan. So Prabhupada said, no, I am very happy to go to Vrindavan, but still not before completion of the construction of Juhu Temple. Uh, every hammer sound or whatever the sounds that I can hear out of the construction of the Juhu temple is like a Kirtan for me. Okay. And every brick that is being, you know, used, you know, every day, four or five bricks, that uh, height of the temple is growing, so that I could see and I can enjoy. So I don't want to go to Vrindavan till the completion of the uh, Juhu temple. And, um, and I want to see that the deities are installed here, then I will go to Vrindavan, he said. Of course, uh, Prabhupada likes to be in Vrindavan before leaving body, of course, because that is his uh, uh, desire that he want to be in Vrindavan before leaving the body. Uh, but later he was moved to Vrindavan. So that was the one of the incidents that how Prabhupada mood was and how the devotional service that Prabhupada has done. And I'll try to relate that particular uh, instance with today's topic, ch chapter 10. Maybe when we come across uh, that verse. Okay. So, <clears throat> so we are inspired by His Holiness Jay Pataka Swami Maharaj. 
so jai pataka swami maharaj is not well he is in delhi now he is undergoing the treatment of course he is out from icu but still he is under the observation of uh, doctors so he has not been instructed to go anywhere out of delhi till he 100% recovers so let us all pray for his holiness jai pataka swami maharaj once Let's all chant one time for Jai Pataka Swami Maharaj for his good health. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. Okay, so let's get into the chapter ten today. So we'll try to see the summary of chapter ten today. So we have seen chapter nine. Anybody remember the name of the chapter nine? गुरु गौरंग प्रभु लास्ट वीक दीक्रेट दट ही टोल इज कृष्णा इज सुप्रीम गॉड कृष्णा इज supreme personality of godhead and there is no other god required to be worship other than supreme god that's what is the most confidential knowledge right so in the chapter 9 it is also called raja guhyam guhyam means secret raja guhyam means superlative degree of secret right so when when krishna said that this is a raja guhyam i'm giving this knowledge to you because you are my friend because you are non envious only okay so that means krishna while giving the knowledge that he is uh, thinking as a secret uh, to arjuna he is also glorifying the qualities of arjuna because the person who is having the qualities of arjuna only can receive such knowledge so we all have to develop the qualities of arjuna so that whatever krishna told to arjuna can be understood as is by us also okay so this is the intention why krishna is keep on repeating about the qualities of arjun and when it comes to bhakti yoga when he started in the chapter 7 so we all understood that the real religion is all about worshiping krishna there is no other religion right that is the dharma and if you do all austerities if you do all punya if you do all pious activities but don't worship krishna it is not dharma so that's why krishna came here all the way to establish dharma what is that dharma the dharma that krishna is trying to establish is paro dharma which is called devotion uninterrupted unmotivated devotion to krishna okay this is the real dharma so why is krishna establishing the dharma that we have to worship krishna and we have to surrender to krishna we have to offer everything to krishna that means we have to develop love for krishna right without love for krishna it is not possible for us to give everything to krishna right like how we give even we don't eat but we will feed our kids right so that love we should have for krishna so how is it possible but he is not uh, with us right away we can't feel him right we don't feel him unless otherwise we see him unless otherwise we Uh, render service to him unless otherwise we feel that krishna is everything it's not possible for us to develop love for krishna right that's why krishna is giving us the knowledge to know about him so once we know about krishna then probably we will develop love for krishna right so that's why krishna is talking more about himself in the chapter 9 the opulences of the absolute the opulences of the absolute absolute is the one who is the absolute krishna okay so he is going to talk about his one opulences today so let us all see we all have in our own perceptions about krishna we don't know how this material creation happened and how this material creation is being maintained and we don't know how this uh, material creation is annihilated right so krishna is going to talk about how all these things are going to happen and uh, in fact the speciality of the chapter 10 is that krishna has revealed about himself 
and about pure devotees and also about what he can do for pure devotees in this chapter. Okay. And at the same time, Arjuna has spoken in all other chapters, like the way he has spoken in all, all other chapters, he has spoken in this chapter also. One verse or two verses, he also has spoken. Arjuna also has spoken. But there is a difference in the way Arjuna has spoken in the previous verses and previous chapters and in this chapter. Till now, although Arjuna accepted Krishna as his supreme God, although accepted Krishna as a guru, so he did not surrender or he did not uh, you know, explicitly mention that Krishna is supreme Lord. So in this verse, after hearing about Krishna, in this chapter, Arjuna is going to declare that he is the supreme Lord. And he is the one who is going to instruct Krishna and he is going to follow Krishna's instructions. That means, after hearing about Krishna for 10 chapters, Arjuna got convinced that Krishna is the Supreme God. Right? Right? So, hopefully we also will get convinced. Hopefully we will also surrender to Krishna like how Arjuna has surrendered. So, let us see what Krishna is talking before giving this knowledge. And what is the difference between the previous chapter knowledge that Krishna has given which is uh, most secret and the knowledge that he is going to give today. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Uya Eva Mahabaho Shunime Paramam Vachaha Yate Ham Premanaya Vaksham Vakshami Hitakam Yaya The Supreme Personality of the Godhead said, listen again, O oh, mighty armed Arjuna, because you are my dear friend, for your benefit, I shall speak to you further, giving the knowledge that is better than what I have already explained. Krishna has explained in the ninth chapter, secret knowledge, most secret knowledge. Parama Guhya Jnana. And after telling about that, in the first verse of 10th chapter, he is telling about, I am going to explain you better than what I have explained today, till now. That means, better knowledge than Paramaguhya Jnana. Better knowledge than most confidential knowledge, he is telling. So, we have we heard the previous chapter, ninth chapter itself is a most confidential. And now he is telling better than best. Right? So, better than best I am going to give. That means, what is it I am talking about? We know the name of the chapter, the appliances of the absolute. When he is talking about the appliances of the absolute, that means the knowledge that he is going to talk about himself. We might be having a doubt that you know everybody else in this world also talk about themselves, right? So to get name, to get fame, and you know they want to be recognized and they want to be identified distinctly from others. So they talk great things about themselves. So that people prize them. So what is the difference between other people and the Krishna talking about himself? Right? Krishna is talking about himself can be compared with the people who are talking about themselves? No. Because Krishna is telling, whatever I am talking to you today is going to help you, not me. Right? So that is the difference. Let's say if I am talking about my me personally, I am that great, I am this great. How is it going to benefit you? Is it going to benefit you in any way? No, it might benefit me. That means anything that I speak in front of others will, will benefit me to get recognition or to get respect. But whereas Krishna is declaring here that I am going to talk about me, but that will benefit you, not me. Right? So that means why we need to leave Krishna more is because that is the only way that we can be purified. Janma karma cha medivyam evam yeveti tattvata. So when we understand janma and karma of Krishna with philosophy, with tattva, then we will understand Krishna, then we will be benefited. We don't get material body again and again after we leave this body. So that is the reason. So who is getting benefited? We are getting benefit. So Krishna is clearly explaining here the benefit is to you and I am explaining you because you are my friend. Again he said. 
so unless otherwise you are not envious against krishna unless otherwise you treat krishna as a supreme god unless otherwise you treat krishna is your well wisher you don't understand what krishna is speaking right so one can understand only what krishna is speaking when you accept krishna as your friend when you when you accept krishna as your well wisher okay so that's what we need to take away from this verse so krishna is telling about himself before he speaks uh chatushloki bhagavad gita is what we call that means the the whole bhagavad gita is compiled in four shlokas so we can understand the whole bhagavad gita by understanding the four verses four shlokas that's why we call those four shlokas as chatushloki bhagavad gita four shlokas of bhagavad gita if you can't chant bhagavad gita every day all the verses at least chant these four verses okay so the verse number 8 verse number 9 verse number 10 and verse number 11 of bhagavad gita okay 8 9 10 11 if you can uh, remember this by heart this and it is very good okay these four shlokas will give the essence of bhagavad gita and we know that the bhagavad gita is the essence of all vedas right but these four shlokas are the essence of bhagavad gita so let us understand what he is talking about himself in these four shlokas so i will give you the glimpse of what he is going to talk in the first verse he is going to tell about him in the second verse ninth verse he is going to talk about the devotees and the 10th and 11th verse he is going to talk about how he will reciprocate to his devotees okay so this is this is what he is going to talk so let us understand let us i want all of you to read along with me and after me i will give you a chance whoever wants to read you can read okay So, because it's most important. Aham sarma swa prabhavo matta sarma pravartate. Iti matva bhajante maam bhuda bhava. Aham sarma swa prabhavo matta sarma pravartate. इति मत्वा भजन्ते माम बोधा भाव समन्विता हा कैन यू डी फॉर दिस इंडिविजुअली माताजी ओके सो इन दिस वर्ड कृष्ण इज गोइंग टू Krishna is talking about the source of the spiritual and material energies. We know the total energies are two: one is material energy and another one is spiritual energy. So we are not material; we are spiritual, right? We are supposed to be in the spiritual world, but we are in contact with the material energy. So the material energy is external to Krishna; spiritual energy is internal to Krishna. Okay. So as long as we are in the material world. as long as we are in contact with the material energy we can't realize who is krishna because the material energy is maya so krishna is telling the i am the source of material energy and the spiritual energy if you see the bible talks about god and saitan right bible talks about god and saitan so what is the saitan's uh, duty saitan duty is to keep us away from god right so so in bible what they say is saitan is a enemy of god right so the material energy is like a saitan material energy is keeping us away from krishna so krishna is talking not talking that material energy is saitan material energy is not the enemy of krishna okay He is telling even the material energy is a source. The source for the material energy is me. Okay, that means Krishna expanded. Krishna expanded into material energy, and Krishna is there in the spiritual energy also. So we will we have to understand a little deep into this. I will take some examples or something from Shrimad Bhagavatam so that you can re- clearly understand what is that Krishna is talking about himself in this verse. 
Krishna said here, I am the source of the spiritual world and I am the source of the material world. So, actually we all know that the Lord Vishnu is the maintainer of this material world. Okay. While Brahma is the creator, Vishnu is a maintainer and Shiva is a destroyer. Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshwar. So while that is the fact, then what is Krishna talking here? So is Vishnu different from Krishna? Is Vishnu uh, not the creator or the maintainer or the destroyer of this material world and the spiritual world? So Krishna is telling, I am the source. That means Krishna is the source for even Vishnu. So let us all understand this detail. Because we all don't know what Krishna is talking in Bhagavad Gita and we all hear from so many so-called gurus and so-called senior citizens and thinking that the Vishnu is the supreme source for all the incarnations of God. It may be Rama, it may be other incarnations, maybe Narasimha or Varaha or Vamana or any other incarnations. The source is Vishnu and uh, there is nothing else beyond Vishnu. Okay. But Krishna here is telling, I am the source even for Vishnu. Right? That means Vishnu is also a fragmental part of Krishna. Please understand this. So in one of the verses, Krishna says that my fragmental part is enough to maintain this material universe. Krishna is not telling that I am enough. I will maintain. I am even not required to maintain this material world. My fragmental part is enough. That means a fragmental part of the fragmental part is enough. It's not even fragmental part. So how do we understand this? Krishna being the source of all, Krishna actually expanded himself as a Karanodaka Sahi Vishnu. Okay, we have to understand Vishnu is not one Vishnu. Vishnus, there are many Vishnus. Krishna expanded himself as you know Purushavatara. Krishna expanded himself as Gunavatara. Krishna expanded himself as uh, Leela Avatara, Krishna expanded himself as Tikti Avesha Avatara. So Krishna expanded himself like, you know, so many Avataras for us, for, you know, liberating us. Okay. So we need to understand that Krishna first expanded as Purusha Avataras. Okay. Krishna is the source and Krishna expanded as Purusha Avataras. Who are those Purusha Avataras? Purusha avatars are Vishnu avatars. Vishnus. The first Vishnu who expanded from Krishna is Karanodaka Sai Vishnu. Okay? Karanodaka Sai Vishnu. And Karanodaka Sai Vishnu was in Karanodaka Ocean. And from his body pores, each body pore, one material universe came. Okay? So the, from the body pores, one material universe came. The lifetime of this material universe is one breathe time of the Karanodaka Sai Vishnu. One time and inhale, 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 exhale. Okay. So while, while Karanodaka Sai Vishnu, you know, creates this material universe. So how many material universes are there? Uncountable. Innumerable material universes are there. The number of sweat pores that we have, right? Like a small body that we have, we have so many sweat pores. And for the Karana of the Kisai Vishnu, it's a big body. We have many such, uh, you know, uh, sweat, uh, sweat pores. So each universe is coming out of this sweat from the body of Karana of the Kisai Vishnu. Then when this universe is exhibited, manifested, then Karanodaka Sai Vishnu expanded as Gargodaka Sai Vishnu, the second Vishnu. Okay, the first Vishnu is Karanodaka Sai Vishnu. The second Vishnu is Gargodaka Sai Vishnu. So Gargodaka Sai Vishnu, as a Gargodaka Sai Vishnu, Karanodaka Sai Vishnu expanded and entered into the each universe. Okay, that means there are innumerable universes. So each universe has one Gargodaka Sai Vishnu. Whereas Karanodaka Sai Vishnu is only one. 
So Karnataka Sai Vishnu is the source for all Garbodaka Sai Vishnus. From the Garbodaka Sai Vishnu, from the navel, there is a lotus, lotus flower cave, and from the lotus flower, Brahma cave. And Brahma started the creation, secondary creation, not the primary creation. Vish, Lord uh, Karnataka Sai Vishnu has done the primary creation, the material universe created. But the secondary creation, that means the living entity is coming into this material world. This is done by Brahma. Okay. So now we heard about two Vishnus, Karanodaka Sai Vishnu and Garpodaka Sai Vishnu. Then for giving the life, for giving the uh, consciousness to the whole material universe and the living entities and every material body, Krishna expanded himself as Shirodaka Sai Vishnu. Shirodaka Sai Vishnu is a Paramatma in us. Krishna expanded himself into every living being, every atom, like Shirodaka Sai Vishnu. So without the spirit, there is no matter. Right? Matter without spirit is called dead. Right? So in this material world, everything, this nature is so beautiful because there is a spiritual energy in it. That spiritual energy is Krishna. And Krishna expanded as a Paramatma. Krishna expanded as a Kshirodaka Sai Vishnu into this material energy and making this material energy to, you know, uh, move, change. Okay. The, otherwise, without soul, body cannot change. Right? Body will have no meaning. In the same way, without Kshirodaka Sai Vishnu, this material uh, nature that we are seeing today will not be so beautiful. Okay. And he is there within us. He expanded into the every body, every living being. So these three avatars of Krishna, Krishna are called Purusha avatars. Okay. Purusha avatars. Then Krishna expanded as Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshwara. The Vishnu that we are talking in this Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshwara is Kshirodaka Sai Vishnu. Okay. And uh, Brahma and Maheshwara, Brahma is also in Krishna's expansion. Okay. So, but Brahma will not have the potencies as Krishna is having, fragmental potencies that he will have, so that that potency of Brahma is sufficient for the material creation. Okay. So, these three avatars, Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshwara are called Gunavataras. Okay. So, these Guna Avataras, each Avatara is a, in charge of one Guna. Vishnu is the in charge of Sattva Guna. Brahma is in charge of Rajoguna, mode of passion. And Shiva is in charge of mode of ignorance, Tamoguna. Okay. So, that's why these three deities are called Guna Avataras. Okay. Then he expands further as Lila Avatara, Sikti Avesha Avataras. Lila avataras come as just like us, like, like a body form, human being. They come into this material world and they perform some leelas. Okay, they perform some pastimes. So when they perform those leelas, we get attracted to those pastimes and we get we we, we develop love for Krishna. That is the reason Krishna, when he is sending us to this material world, he is taking care that you will come back to him. For that, he himself is expanding as a Leela Avataras and executing so many pastimes. Okay. Like we have seen so many pastimes in Krishna, uh, in the uh, Vrindavan performing pastimes, in Madhura performing pastimes, in uh, Dwaraka performing pastimes, all these things. Right. These all will help us understand about Krishna and get love for Krishna. So this is how Krishna is expressed. Now clear the source Krishna and from there Purusha Avataras and from there Guna Avataras after that Leela Avataras and Shakti Avesa Avataras. So, so this is how we should understand that the Krishna is the source of all material and spiritual energies. Now, so what will happen when we understand about this? What is the benefit that we get by understanding Krishna is the source of all. So we become a pure devotee of Krishna. Right? 
So the pure devotee of Krishna's qualities are given here. Machitta madgata prana bodhayanta parasparam. Kadayantas chamam nityam tushyanti charamanti cha. Machitta madgata prana bodhayanta parasparam. Kadayantas chamam nityam tushyanti charamanti cha. The, the thoughts of my pure devotee dwell in me. Their lives are fully devoted to my service and they derive great satisfaction and bliss from always enlightening one another and conversing about me. This is the quality of a pure, pure devotee. Okay. So Krishna is talking how the pure devotee will be. He is telling the pure devotees will always think about Krishna. Nothing else they will think. They will always think about Krishna. We might be thinking that we are going to office working and morning to evening, working hard and coming back and enjoying with kids, enjoying with family. And for people seeing from outside, they think that we are material. But the person who is a pure devotee and a non-devotee, the difference is only the consciousness. Okay. The pure devotee will always be thinking about Krishna. Whatever he is doing, he is doing for Krishna. Whatever he is talking, he is talking for Krishna. Whatever he is you know, rendering services, he is rendering services only to please Krishna. Okay, Nothing else. Even if he is earning money, he is earning money to keep his family happy. Why he want to keep his family happy is because his family is pure devotees. And if he can keep his pure, Krishna of pure devotees happy, it is as good as keeping the Krishna happy. There is no difference between serving pure devotee and serving Krishna. If you can serve pure devotee, it is equal to serving Krishna. Krishna says, if you serve my devotee, I will be pleased, then you serve me. That's why you should become not the dasa of Krishna. We should become dasa of Krishna's dasa. Right? So we should be a dasa, dasa, anu dasa. Right? If you are a devotee of Krishna, you are great. If you are a devotee of devotee of Krishna, you are more great. If you are a devotee of devotee of devotee of devotee of Krishna, we are much more great. <laughs> so that's why we should be serving Vaishnavas. We should be serving devotees. That's when Krishna will be pleased. That's why Krishna says, I am not pleased if you serve me, but I am pleased if you serve devotees. Okay. Why? Why? Because Krishna said, I reside in the pure hearts of pure devotees. Okay. I am not there in Vaikuntha. I am not there in Dhamma. I am not there anywhere. I am there in the place where Bhagavad Gita is being discussed. I am there in the place where pure devotees are. Okay. So without pure devotee, gone. Okay. Without the help of pure devotee, you can't even understand about God. You can't even reach God. In this, not in this lifetime. Even in many lifetimes we spend, we can't understand Krishna. We we can't reach Krishna. So it is very important that we serve pure devotee. It is very important that we render service to pure devotee and get blessings of pure devotee. Okay. So that is the uh, one more uh, beauty of Krishna's devotion. That's why we, we all want to become Krishna devotee. So that's why Krishna says, understand me with philosophy. Understand me with philosophy. So once you understand me with philosophy, you can easily reach me. Okay. Then second quality about uh, the devotee that he was telling here is about the devotee is they will they will be rendering service and they uh, they derive great satisfaction bliss from always enlightening one and another always enlightening from one and another and conversing about me. So they will be discussing about Krishna. Matchita madhata prana. 
Okay. Then <clears throat> that means they will be thinking about Krishna till their death. If they can't render service to Krishna, they will think that their life is waste. There is no meaning for their life. I'll tell you one example to understand this. Okay. So Radhana Swami Maharaj was a great disciple of uh, uh, Srila Prabhupada. Okay, Radhana Swami Maharaj is a god brother of our Jayapataka Swami Maharaj. Okay. So Radhana Swami Maharaj was young. He was around teenage when he was when he came from US to India, Vrindavan. So first time he came to Vrindavan and uh, he, he does not know what to do and uh, he went to Vrindavan and the Vrindavan is full of devotees, right? All sadhus. Okay. Then he wanted to stay in one place. He went and asked sadhu, one sadhu, he is almost aged sadhu. He was staying in, all alone in one room. Then Radharaj Swami Maharaj asked him, Maharaj, I want to stay with you for a few days till I find my place. Then that uh, sadhu agreed for staying. He has only one blanket. He has only one cot. And he has only one room. Radhana Swami Maharaj was associating with him. And he has, uh, that sadhu was having one deity, Krishna deity. Every day he goes to Yamuna, gets water from Yamuna and do Abhisheka to that deity. Okay, this is what that sadhu was doing. That is the devotional service that he is performing. When Radharat Maharaj Swami has seen uh, uh, this devotee, then uh, he said, you have grown old. It's almost more than a kilometer you have to walk to get the Yamuna water. And uh, use that water for you know Abhisheka. Can I help you? I will get the water so that you can do Abhisheka. Radhanath Swami said. So, Radhanath Swami was a pure devotee. So, the sadhu cannot deny a pure devotee's request. Because he knows the value of pure devotee, right? Association of pure devotee. And uh, if, it, if he says, no, 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 you should not do this, then it, is, it becomes offense against Vaishnava. Okay? So, then sadhu said, no, no, no. Uh, he did not say no, no. He, he was quiet. And the Radha Swami Maharaj thought uh, uh, that, you know, okay, I can bring water for him from Yamuna River. So he took the container and he started walking. Few steps he walked. And the moment he, is, he went out of the house, then the sadhu started crying. Sadhu fell down on the floor and started crying. And my life is waste. And I'm living for nothing. If I can't serve you, the only service that I'm doing, Krishna is bringing water from Yamuna and serving him with Abhisheka. Today, I lost that chance also. Radhana Swami Maharaj was, uh, that time he was not Maharaj, Radhana Swami Maharaj before his uh, Sanyasa Diksha. So, so then Radhana Swami Maharaj felt very bad. Then he went back uh, to that sadhu and asked him, why are you crying? Did I do any offense? Uh, am I wrong? So then that sadhu said, no, 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 you have not done any offense. But I am feeling sad because I could not serve Krishna. So this is the mood of pure devotee. A pure devotee thinks that the service that he is having, he, want, he does not want to give it to anybody. And if he gives it to anybody, then he thinks he is of useless and Krishna has not chosen him. And he thinks that, you know, in this life, I'm not even qualified to, you know, serve Krishna. Okay. So this is the mood. That's why Krishna is telling here, my devotee renders service to me always. Thinks about me always. That is the pure devotee that Krishna is talking about here. Okay. So such a pure devotee will talk about Krishna, enlighten each other. Means they discuss among themselves about Krishna. And they will feel transcendental bliss. So, what is it? Tushyanti cha, ramanti cha. What is that? Tushyanti cha, ramanti cha means? 
they talk about krishna among themselves and this they they they, they will be uh, getting the great satisfaction okay so this is how a pure devotee will be so if you see the photo where i have given so many pure devotees are sitting together what are they talking they are talking about krishna <laughs> they are discussing about krishna's past times they are talking about shrimad bhagavatam this is what pure devotees do that's why when two pure devotees meet what will happen only krishna katha will happen nothing else will happen and only krishna katha will be discussed nothing else will be discussed unlike the material mundane people you know talking about cricket celebrity right we we see one movie and we come back and we explain that movie for two hours movie we explain for five hours right <laughs> one one character we will explain and then you know even the person who is listening is not interested to listen to us but we keep telling them that no i i watch it today you know what is the chiranjeevi movie or maybe rajkumar movie and <laughs> and they will explain for hours together right and uh, a person who is mad about cricket he will watch 5 hours or 4 hours of one day match and he will he will uh, analyze that cricket for one week right so in so person has bowled the ball like this instead of bowling like this he could have bowled like that so that he would have out uh, otherwise he could have not made a century <laughs> so many analysis we do right so in this analysis we might lose our bus we might lose our train but we don't care and we might lose our life also we don't care but we will analyze one day cricket for one week 10 days right that is the happiness that he is getting in analyzing the cricket and the movie okay but whereas a pure devotee talks about krishna always and gets happiness in it that's why krishna is telling here tadayantasya maam nityam they talk about me always and tushyanti cha ramanti cha while they are talking they will be enjoying they will be getting the transcendental bliss right we all are happy right today discussing about what krishna is feeling enjoying right in the same way when we discuss about krishna krishna uh, spoken bhagavad gita or shrimad bhagavatam which is spoken about krishna then we will also be enjoying right so this is the glory of you know talking about krishna discussing about krishna uh, and dis discussing about pure devotees when you become a pure devotee like this so how krishna will reciprocate to you okay that's what he spoken he has spoken in the next two verses tesham satata yukta nam bhajatam priti purvakam dadhami buddhi yogantam ुद्धियोगयांति to those who are constantly devoted to serving me with love i give the understanding by which they can come to me okay if we are really desiring about reaching krishna if you are really desiring to serve krishna you don't have to do any endeavor you don't have to you know put in any effort krishna will help krishna will make sure that you get the service that you wanted the spiritual desires are like that you don't have to be doing anything unless other unless other than uh, other than what you have to have is a desire just think in your mind that i want to serve krishna that is enough krishna will ensure that you will get a service to krishna there as in material desires if you want to become a is officer you have to work hard right you have to work hard and maybe five attempts will be given and uh, fifth attempt luckily we may get or we may not get we don't know krishna will not give material desires so easily 
Okay. If you have a material desire that you want to become richest of rich, Krishna may not give you. Unless otherwise, you say that when I become a richest of rich, I will bring all the money and uh, do service to me. <laughs> then Krishna will give you all the material appliances. Otherwise, Krishna will help you. <laughs> so what will you do if Krishna gives you money? If you say that I will enjoy, I will go to Switzerland, I will go to Malaysia, Singapore, then Krishna will not give you. <laughs> Krishna will say that, you know, this person has already fallen. If I give him more money, he will fall more and he will start going to all other places where the more bad habits can be, you know, cultivated. So Krishna will say, no, be like this. At least I don't want to give you anything more which can spoil you, right? So Krishna wanted us to become a good human being. Right? Good human being. For us to become a good human being, Krishna will give you anything. Okay. So like how Dhruva Maharaj went to Krishna asking for a kingdom bigger than his great-grandfather. What is this? This is a material design. Right? So Krishna said, four types of people can come to me. Arti, Ardhardhi, Jijnasu, and uh, yeah. Jnani. So out of this Ardhardhi, Ardhardhi means the person who is anchoring for money <laughs> or maybe material you know, uh, opulences. So he can go to Krishna. In the same way, Dhruva Maharaj went for asking Krishna to get a kingdom bigger than his great-grandfather. Who is great-grandfather? Brahmadev. Right? So who should he go to if he want to get a bigger kingdom than Brahma? If he go to Brahma, Brahma can give his kingdom. He cannot give bigger than his kingdom. So he went to Vishnu. So Vishnu can give him bigger kingdom. So then Vishnu has given. So that's why Dhruva Maharaj has got a Dhruva planet. You know Dhruva star? Dhruva star we call, right? So the Dhruva planet is given to Dhruva Maharaj. So actually you understand what Krishna is telling here. If you really have a desire to serve me, I will help you. Actually, the Dhruva Maharaj was having a desire to serve Krishna because his stepmother scolded him. His stepmother scolded him saying that you don't deserve to become a king. You don't deserve to sit in the lap of your father. Okay. Only my son can sit in the lap of my husband. So you are not my son. You are son of my stepsister. So what happens? If you want to get the qualification to sit on the throne of uh, this kingdom, you should pray Lord Vishnu and die in this uh, life and take birth Again, in my womb, then you will become eligible. This is what his stepmother told. Then he has taken that words very seriously. Because he went to his mother and then he, he told to his mother that, you know, stepmother is telling like this. Then his mother said, what she said is right. If you really want to get a kingdom greater than your father, greater than your grandfather, greater than your great-grandmother, go and worship Vishnu. So that a people who wants to get liberation also go and worship Vishnu. People who want to get uh, material appliances also go and worship Vishnu. You also go and worship Vishnu. So while he is going, Krishna sent Narada Muni to Dhrumaras. Dhrumaras did not in search for uh, Dhrumaras was not in the search for uh, his guru. He just wanted to go and search for Vishnu. That's all. He does not know how to get Vishnu. He does not know what is the process to get Vishnu? He just wants to get Vishnu. And what did Vishnu do? He sent Narada. Narada Muni came to Dhruva Maharaj and initiated him and given him the process of how he can get Vishnu and how he can fulfill his desires. Then Dhruva Maharaj has followed the instructions of his Guru, Narada Muni. So please understand that if you have a desire to serve Krishna, Krishna will send you good. That's what Krishna is telling. I will help you. Krishna will send us good. Without Guru, it is not possible for us to get Krishna. Forget Krishna. Don't even think about Krishna if you don't think about Guru. Only means to get Krishna. If you don't believe in Guru and if you say that I 
I have pure love for Krishna and I can love Krishna and I can worship Krishna with my heart, my soul, my intelligence, my mind, everything I can worship Krishna, but Krishna will not even look at you. You have to come to Krishna through Guru. Okay. The first Guru that is Krishna himself. He is called Chaitra Guru. He is there as a Paramatma in our heart. He is instructing us. But we are not listening. We are not listening. Krishna is sitting in our heart along with the soul and telling, look at me, look at me, look at me. But we are looking other side. Right? We are looking other side. So because we want to enjoy the material enjoyment, so we are looking when will the sick time become six? When will I go back to, you know, evening bar or maybe something else, enjoy pub or how can I enjoy my day? Because life is very short. I have to enjoy before it is over. Right? So that's what we think. But we don't understand that this short life we are misusing. In the short life we are not using the body properly. So so the concept here, what Krishna is telling is that Dadami Buddhi Yogantam. Dadami Buddhi Yogantam means he will give the Buddhi Yoga. That means the intelligence, the knowledge is given to us by Krishna as a Guru. Krishna, the first, we have to worship Guru as a Krishna. Because Guru is the representative of Krishna. If you don't get Guru and if you want to get Krishna, it is not possible. In this lifetime and in any lifetime, it is not possible to get Krishna. This is the thing that we need to understand. So, all of us, if you really want to get the love for Krishna, please understand that we have to pray Guru. We have to make Guru accept us. We should become a disciple of a Guru. And the Guru is not someone who teaches material knowledge. The Guru, a real Guru, a bona fide Guru is the one who connects us with Krishna. Okay. Any Guru, he is not talking about Krishna. Any Guru who is not talking about how you can be connected with Krishna. Any Guru who is talking only about how you can be happy, how you can be, you know, become more rich or how you can be more healthy or how you can be materially happy, then he is not real Guru. Please give up such Gurus. Okay. Even Bali Maharaj has given up his uh, Guru, spiritual master. Who is he? Shukracharya. Why? Because Shukracharya told, don't worship Vamanadev. Don't surrender to Vamanadev. Don't, don't offer everything to Vamanadev, he said. But what Krishna is telling, offer everything to me. But what Sukracharya is telling? He is telling, don't offer everything to Vamandev. Vamandev is Swayam Krishna. Right? So, what is Sukracharya telling? Sukracharya telling, he is a disciple, Bali Maharaj, not to worship Krishna. So, what should a disciple do? What should a pure devotee do? He should give up such gurus. He should not even think about such gurus in our life. So, Bali Maharaj did not listen to his guru Sukracharya. He has offered everything to Krishna. Right? He has offered everything to Krishna. Himself he offered. That is the topmost offering that one can do to Krishna. It's not that what I possess, I offer myself to Krishna. If that can be done, that is the topmost offering. Bali Maharaj has done. That's why Bali Maharaj is one among the Mahajans. Right? Bali Maharaj is one among the Mahajans. So that's why I, see, why, why I'm talking about Guru more here is that, you know, the knowledge that we are getting is only possible to get only from a pure devotee and that pure devotee should be a representative of Krishna and we call him as a Guru. Right? So, unless otherwise you get Guru, it is not possible. Next. Tesha meva nu kampardam aham ajnana jamtamaha Nashayamyatma bhavasto jnana deepena bhashvata. Tesha neva nu kampardham aham ajnana dam tamaha. Nashayamyatma bhavasto jnana deepena bhashvata. 
नाशयामात्मस्तो ज्ञान दीपेन भाश्वत टू शो दल मर्सी आई डिंग इन देर हार्ट डिस्ट्रॉय डिस्ट्रॉय विद द शाइनिंग लैंप ऑफ नॉलेज द डार्कनेस बॉर्न इन द इग्नोरेंस से कृष्ण इज टेलिंग आई सिट इन देर हार्ट and destroy the ignorance so when you try to become a devotee krishna swayam will krishna himself will come and sit in my our heart and what is the benefit of krishna sitting in our heart there is no ajnana there is no darkness right so he is saying my presence is like a shining lamp my presence is like a shining lamp and where there is a light there is no darkness right so where there is krishna there is no ignorance so once if the krishna is there in our heart if we can withhold krishna in our heart we will not be doing any mental speculation about krishna we will not be deviating ourselves from krishna we will not be getting into the trap of material maya okay so that's what krishna is saying so we wanted to get out of this maya right unless otherwise you you know conquer this maya it is not possible for us to get krishna krishna is telling you desire have a desire in your heart that you want to become a devotee that is enough that is your duty rest all krishna will take care what is he saying krishna will give you guru krishna will sit in your heart and 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 destroy the darkness in your heart this is how one can be enlightened so that's why a pure devotee association is more more important once if you are in the association of a pure devotee then only it is possible for us to get krishna prema otherwise we don't get if we are say we we say right six months if you stay with one person you become you get the qualities of others right so in the same way if you are in the association of a pure devotee you will become pure devotee if you want and is that you have a desire to become pure devotee right so if you want to become an ias officer what should you do you should go to a person who has become ias officer and he, you you have to associate with him and you understand how he got that position and then you follow him right that's what we do even you tell your children uh, saying that So, if a person is not good, don't do friendship with him. Why we tell? Because you don't want his qualities in your son. Because if your son associates with such people, your son also become like that. So they will use bad words. They will talk bad. They will do bad works. So you will also become bad if you associate with him. So you have good friends built. So when you want to become a devotee, when you want to worship Krishna, you be associated with the people who worship Krishna. you be associated with the people who are pure devotees then only you can become krishna if you are associated with the material people you will become material materialistic and at the end what will happen a dog is living a pig is living a cat is living and leaving the body and we are also living in this body just like how other animals are gratifying their senses we are also gratifying our senses we will also leave the body that is not the end of the story unfortunately we take another animal body and then start the cycle again right so that is not the purpose of the human life the purpose of the human life is to get the spiritual more spiritual abode krishna so that's why krishna is telling for that you become my devotee you worship me just like a pure devotee is qualities he has given and if you have that desire i will help you krishna is saying. have the desire so can we all have the desire today can we all okay thank you tenth one it is there in uh, bhagavad gita as it is book mother ji you can okay okay these four verses are called chatushloki bhagavad gita Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay.
So now, after hearing all this, Arjuna is talking. I told you, there is a difference in what Arjuna has spoken till 9 chapters and what he is talking now in 10th chapter. What is the difference we will see? Arjuna Vacha Param Brahma Param Dhamma Pavitram Paramam Bhavan Purusham Sashvatam Divyam Adhi Devam Ajam Vibhum Ahutvam Rushaya Sarve Devar Shirnaradhar Stada Asito Devalu Vyasaha Swayan Chaiva Bravishime Param Brahma Param Dhamma Purusham Sashvatam Divyam Adhi Devam Ajam Vibhum Arjuna said, You are the supreme personality of Godhead. So Arjuna saying about Krishna first time, after hearing 10th chapter, agreeing that Krishna is the supreme. Okay. So Arjuna is saying, You are the supreme personality of the Godhead. The ultimate abode, the purest, the absolute truth. You are the eternal, transcendental, original person, the unborn, the greatest. All the great sages such as Narada, Asita, Devala and Vyasa come from this truth about you. And now you yourself are declaring it to me. Okay. So please understand there is a difference. Here Arjuna is telling that I understood that you are a supreme lord and the worship to you is an ultimate and there is no other worship required if you can worship Krishna. That's what we heard in the ninth chapter. That's why we Krishna refuted the arg argument of worshipping demigods. You don't have to worship any devata. You don't have to worship any devi for that matter. Okay. If you can worship Krishna, it is equal to worshipping everybody. It is just like how you are feeding food to your stomach so that all your body parts are getting energized. Right? If you can worship Krishna, all Devi Devatas are satisfied. Right? If you want energy to your hand, will you feed to your hand? Saying that hand, hand, you have food so that you will be more energetic. Can you say that? No, right? What will you do? You will feed to mouth only. And, the, and it will go to the stomach. And if the stomach is happy, your hand will be happy. In the same way, if you can worship Krishna, then all Devi Devatas are happy. Because all Devi Devatas are part and parcels of Krishna's body. In 11th chapter, we will see that. In the 11th chapter, we will see that how all Devi Devatas are part and parcel of Krishna's body. In the material body of Krishna. So what uh, here, Arjuna is also declaring that you are Param Brahma, Param Dhamma, Pavitram, Paramam Dhava. So, and it is not that I am hearing first time from you. Already I heard this from who? Narada, Atita, Devala and Vyasa. Why is he talking about specifically these four people? Authorities. And authorities in four different uh, uh, ways. Narada is a Bhakti Yogi. Okay. A person in Bhakti also speaks that Krishna is Supreme Lord. A person who is having uh, Jnana also speaks that he is, uh, you are the Supreme Lord. And uh, a person who, who lives in Karma Yoga, okay, also says that you are Supreme Lord. And a person who worship impersonal Brahman also says that you are Supreme Lord. That means, whether you are a Karma Yogi, whether you are a Dhyana Yogi, or you are a uh, Jnana Yogi, or a Bhakti Yogi, all yogis talk that you are the Supreme Lord and the same fact you are also telling to me now. So I am also agreeing that you are Supreme Lord. This is what Krishna is saying. So any one of us having any doubt about Krishna is a Supreme Personality of Godhead. Any of us? Yes, no, no. Okay. So that is great. 
So because the authorities are saying this, authorities are saying this, even Krishna is trying to say, even Brahma Samhita Brahma says this. Okay, Krishna is Supreme God. Even Shiva Purana Shiva talks that Krishna is Supreme God. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, I am Supreme God. So there is no doubt. Krishna is Supreme God. That's why in the 8th chapter only he said, I am the source, 8th verse only he said, I am the source of all spiritual enmity. Okay. So now how do we realize that Krishna is a Supreme? How do we? So we are all contaminated materially in this material world and we don't know how to feel him, how to realize him. That's why Krishna is going to help us how we can feel him in this material world. Okay. So, <clears throat> Sri Bhagavan Vacha Hatamte Kata Ishyami Divya Hyatma Vibhutaya Pradhan Yata Purusreshta Nathyanto Nathyanto Vistarasyami The Supreme Personality of the God had said, yes, I will tell you my splendor, splendorous manifestations, but only of those which are prominent. So Arjuna, for my opulence is limitless. Krishna saying about himself, I will tell you a few uh, you know, prominent manifestations of me, like how I manifested in this material world, I will tell you. But I'm going to tell you only prominent things. But if I start telling you about everything about me, it is not possible to complete in, you know, in 18 chapters or in this one hour. Okay. So Krishna is telling most important things and prominent things I will tell you about me. Okay. So the Krishna's glories are unlimited. It is not possible for us to glorify Krishna fully. So, uh, Anantadev has so many heads, right? Anantasesh has so many heads. So, Krishna has given him a responsibility of carrying all material universes on his head. So, each head carries one one material universe. And that, ma the, and that material universe is like a mustard seed on the head of the uh, uh, Anantasesh. Okay. So then Ananda said, how long I have to carry this? And Krishna said, you start glorifying me now. And while you are glorifying, there is a condition. While you are glorifying, you should not repeat what you have glorified. And you keep glorifying only unique glorifications every time. And the second rule is, you should not glorify what you have glorified with other mode. Because he has other, uh, uh, unlimited mouths. Because so many heads, so many mouths. So you glorify with all thousand mouths. And one mouth glorified one quality of me. And the same quality should not be glorified by other mouths. So in this way, you keep glorifying me. When you feel that there is nothing left to glorify me, then you keep the material words. No, you don't have to care. And then Adi Sesha, Ananta Sesha, continuously glorifying from the start of this material universe and till now and for the future also you glorify. And it is not over. Right? That is the glorification. That is the glories of uh, Krishna that is limitless. Well, that's why Krishna is telling here, my opulences are limitless. It is not possible for one to glorify. When one is glorifying, Ananta, Adi Sesha is glorifying with Unlimited mouse for unlimited time, he could not complete it. So, how is it possible for us to glorify in one day, one hour, Krishna? It is not possible. So, that is the <coughs> thing that Krishna is telling. It is not possible for me to explain everything, but I will tell you a few things. I have summarized the next concept uh, of Bhagavad Gita in chapter 8 in, uh, in one verse. So, Krishna is telling, out of all demigods, I am Indra. Out of all Adityas, I am Vishnu. Out of all Rudras, I am Shiva. Out of all generals, I am Kartikeya. Out of Vasus, I am Agni. Out of Daityas, I am Prahlada. Out of uh, 
dispensers of law i am yama out of creators i am brahma out of cause of procreation i am kandarpa means uh, who is kandarpa cupid okay so these are the few things that you, so we might be seeing you know, so many great things in the material world right so whatever great thing that we see is krishna if you see talent in somebody the talent is krishna so you should not glorify that person you should glorify the glorify krishna so that because krishna has given the talent to that person but a scientist are inventing discovering so many things right we glorify them oh he is so great person he found a helicopter or he found a light or he found laptop he found tv okay so we glorify them right he is great he is great we say how he got the talent why the talent is not there in us that's why krishna is telling anything that you see great in this material world that greatness is me if krishna's mercy is not there he cannot be the talented a scientist cannot be scientist if krishna is not you know showing mercy on him krishna is not you know uh, you know giving him that energy so that's why the pure devotee thinks that anything that he possesses is because of krishna whether it is a good or it is a bad nothing he thinks that it is because of me that is the difference between a pure devotee and a non devotee a non devotee thinks that if he, if he achieves something he says that it is because of me without me my company cannot run without me nothing can happen in my house what will happen if i am not there in my office what will happen if i am not there what will happen to this society if i am not there this is the attitude of a person who is you know materially engaged person okay but when as pure devotee what he thinks if i am doing something it is because of krishna if i am delivering something that is because of krishna that's what krishna is telling krishna is telling i am there everywhere if you see if you think indra is position in demigods that indra is me so that's what well, see in the, in the in devatas different positions we have told in devasas krishna is telling it is all because of me then whereas if you see in the nature on the light of the sun we think sun is a illuminating on his own right but the sun's uh, you know that light is coming from krishna if krishna is not giving that light sun also cannot be glowing so brightly okay the light of the sun is me and the stars among the stars i am the moon among the mountains i am the meru meru parvata among the immovable sun himalaya among the water bodies i am the ocean among the trees i am the banyan tree among the rivers i am ganga among the months i am markachira among the seasons i am spring okay so krishna is telling so anything that is pleasing you it is because of krishna if the spring season is very nice to you then think krishna the krishna because of krishna if you see ocean how big it is when you think about the ocean think that it is because of krishna if you cannot think about krishna when you see any great in this material world that means you are not feeling krishna in every way a pure devotee feels krishna everywhere in this way okay that helps us develop love for krishna then among the sages out of all sages i am the vyasa the great sages i am bhrugu maharshi bhrugu bhrugu is a great sage and sages among the demigods i am narada narada is a devarshi devarshi let me say devarshi deva in devatas also rishi is there that rishi is narada krishna is telling i am narada that means narada is also incarnation of krishna in one way so he is a devotional means bhakti incarnation okay we, we said right krishna expands himself like shakti avesha avataras krishna expands like leela avataras krishna expands like a devotee also right so in this kali age krishna expanded as chaitanya mahaprabhu 
a devotee. Okay. So in the same way, among devatas, a great devotee, Narada. Krishna is telling, I am Narada. Then among the priests, Brihaspati, perfected beings, Kalpa, uh, Kapila, great thinkers, Sukracharya. Sukracharya is great because he is materially great. Because we, we say anybody great uh, because they possess materially great. Right? If something somebody achieves great materially, then we tell them they are great, right? In the same way, Sukracharya is someone who is helping uh, all demons. That means demons are the one who actually uh, does not think about Krishna and they think about themselves. Okay. So for them, Sukracharya is helping. So that is the greatness of uh, Krishna. And among the animals, among the horses, I am the Ucheshrava. Lordly elephants are my Airavata. Among the cows, I am Surabhi. Among the serpents, I am Vasuki. Many hooded Nagas, I am Ananta. The Ananta Sesha we have spoken. Many hoods he will have. Then among fishes, I am shark. Among beasts, I am lion. Among birds, I am Garuda. Okay. Then the philosophical truths. Are the living entities heart? I am uh, super soul. Sorry. I am among the senses, I am the mind. And uh, among the living entity, so heart, I am the super soul. Poetry, I am Gayatri. Letters are compound words, dual compound. Among the science, spiritual science. Among the logi uh, logicians, conclusive truth. Samaveda hymns, I am Bruhasam. Krishna is saying, actually, Samaveda itself is a great Veda of among all. Because Samaveda glorifies Krishna. So among all Vedas, Samaveda only glorifies God, Supreme God. So among so among within this Samaveda, Bruhasama is great. Because uh, Purusha Sukta is spoken in Bruhasama. Okay. So the one that Arjuna has spoken at Parandhama Paramambhava. So these all things come in the Purusha Sukta, and the Purusha Sukta is there in Samaveda. <coughs> then among the Vedic mantras, among the vibrations, I am the Vonkara. Among the sacrifices, I am the chanting of the holy name. Among Vedas, Sama Veda. So please understand. He is telling, we all think that the sacrifices. So Krishna is telling, the whole chanting of the holy name is the greatest sacrifice. So that's why we all should chant Hare Krishna. Okay. So that is the greatest sacrifice that we can do. Because in the age of Kali, there is no other sacrifice that we can do other than Japa. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. If one can do this, this is the greatest sacrifice that we can do. That's why Krishna said in this, Yajnanam Japa Yajnosmi. So among all the Yajnas, Japa Yajna is the topmost Yajna. Okay. So we all have to start chanting Hare Krishna Mahamadu. So I think once we complete Bhagavad Gita, 18 chapters, we will have a chanting workshop to understand how the chanting can be done, to understand the importance of chanting. We will have a workshop one day, chanting workshop, okay, after completing 18 chapters. And once we complete the 18 chapters, we all will take a commitment of chanting at least one round in a day. One round chanting is one out eight times saying Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. This is the commitment we, do, we should take. Because Krishna himself is telling that chanting holy name is the best sacrifice among all the sacrifices. So we, we should not ignore what Krishna is telling after hearing about Bhagavad Gita. Right? So let us all be committed for that. So this is all about it. 10th chapter. Let's recap once what is there in the 10th ch chapter. Krishna said the qualifications to hear from Krishna. What is the qualification? We should be friend. Okay. Next. Then Krishna's opulences and the benefits of knowing them. So 8th chapter we have seen. 8th eighth, eighth shloka we have seen. I am the source of all spiritual and material. 
and ninth verse we have seen how a devotee worship krishna machitta madhya taprana bodayanta parasa okay. then the 10th and 11th verse krishna has spoken about reciprocation with the pure devotees what did he say i will help you i will help you reach me and um, i will give you pure devotion right and krishna gives us the required intelligence and his mercy okay then how we can feel krishna then and then, then, then arjuna is agreeing krishna as a supreme god super, supreme personality of godhead we have seen that and then the last but not the least krishna's appearances in this material world okay thank you very much anybody has any questions i'll take for few minutes before we end the class thank you very much hari krishna all understood no questions Thank you so much, sir. You said this summary.